Hi everybody, the episode you're about to see I filmed Sunday morning, and as I was going to post the episode Sunday afternoon, the news of Kobe Bryant's tragic death broke. I of course didn't post the episode because honestly, this episode and anything having to do with sports cards is trivial compared to the great life that Kobe Bryant lived and the many people that Kobe affected. One of the things that I'm most sad about Kobe's death is that he was a great philanthropist. He was somebody who was actively giving back to his community. He was somebody who was actively helping so many people's lives. And so not only did we lose a great basketball star and somebody whose cards were great for us to collect in the hobby, but we also lost somebody who was making the world a better place. Uh, it's an absolute tragedy what happened. Um, I'm posting this episode now because sports cards do bring relief. They do bring joy. They do bring happiness to the lives of many. For me and probably for you, they're a fun escape. So let's embrace sports cards, let's embrace the hobby, and let's spend the next 30 minutes geeking out about the price changes of Zion Williamson's cards because I hope that this will bring you a little bit of escape and a little bit of joy uh, in what has otherwise been a tragic couple of days. Thank you and enjoy. My name is Jeff Wilson. By day, I invest in tech companies. And at night, I invest in sports cards. Join me on my journey to profit from the hobby we all love. Hello, sports card investors, and welcome to another episode. And man, am I pumped up today because what a week it has been for the hobby. Zion Media finally came true. And on Wednesday, like probably most of you, I was sitting on my couch watching the return of Zion. And people asked, what is my reaction? How did I react Wednesday? I'll tell you. I sat there with my wife on my couch on Wednesday. First quarter, I kind of looked at my wife. She kind of looked at me and she's like, what's the hype about this guy? This guy seems heavy. He seems out of shape. He seems kind of lethargic. Maybe he's still a little injured. Like, what's the hype about this guy? Second quarter passes, same reaction. Third quarter passes. And I am thinking in my mind, man, his card prices are about to fall. Zion's card prices are going to start to come back down to earth a little bit. This could be a real cooling off period for Zion. And then, of course, the fourth quarter comes around. And 17 straight points for Zion. Four three-pointers. He looked absolutely incredible. And all of a sudden, I was like, oh my God, his card prices are going to go bonkers. His card prices are going to go bananas. And they did. And I have to tell you what, I think you all are crazy. I think you are crazy. I get the reaction to his performance. I get the fact that many people think he's going to be a transcendent player and an all-time great and everything like that. But I got to say, be careful because I think the crash is going to come. And in today's episode, I'm going to show you some of the statistics as to why I do not think this is going to end well right now for some of you who have been buying Zion cards since Wednesday night. I'm going to show that to you in today's episode. And as part of this episode today, you're going to see something really cool. I am going to use the new Market Movers tool that I have been working on developing for the last several months to show you some of these statistics. You're going to be the very first people ever to see this tool in today's episode. Stay tuned. But first, I wanted to mention, if you are going to be in the Atlanta area, I am going to be at a card show this upcoming Saturday, the Saturday before the Super Bowl, Super Bowl in Loganville, the Loganville Sports Collector Show at Grace Point Nazarene Church. Uh, this upcoming Saturday, February the 1st, I will be there from 8 a.m. to noon. Again, Grace Point Nazarene Church in Loganville. Hope to see you there if you are in the Atlanta area. All right, so let's talk Zion and let's talk about the actual card price movements that occurred since, since his debut. Actually, let's go back and look at the last 10 days because there was a little bit of a run up 
uh, of in card prices uh, with the anticipation of him coming back. You saw his cards kind of move every day. And then, of course, he came back. And let's take a look at what has happened to his card prices since that point in time. So I am now going to go to my new market mover tool uh, to give you a sneak peek. By the way, this tool is not available yet but it will be available for you to subscribe to within the next two weeks. This has been a tool that I've been putting a lot of time in and it can do a lot more than what I'm gonna show you today, but you just get a little taste of it today. This will become available within the next two weeks uh, for you to subscribe to, along with a whole bunch of other cool things as part of the new membership program I am about to roll out with in the next two weeks, so stay tuned. Okay, so if you're watching on YouTube, you're now seeing my Market Movers tool. If you're on the podcast, I'm going to describe this to you as we go. What you're seeing on your screen is the sales of Zion's Base Prism Raw card over the last 10 days. And this 10-day period, as you can see, his card started here at the beginning of the 10-day period at about $59. $59.71 was his average price. By the end of the 10-day period, so yesterday... $80.39. So his cards, his base Prism Raw cards have increased 34.6% over the course of the last 10 days. Now, one stat that I find particularly amazing here, uh, other than just simply the increase in prices, is the transaction volume. Over the last 10 days, there have been 745 Zion Williamson base prism raw card sold. This is on eBay. All of this data, by the way, is eBay data. 745 sales of that card on eBay. That is an absolutely incredible transaction volume. And while I don't have the statistics going back years and years to prove this, my guess is that is the greatest transaction volume that eBay has seen of a single card in the history of eBay in a 10-day period. That is my guess based upon the data that's available to me. It's an incredible transaction volume. So what this tells me is that Zion cards obviously are unbelievably hot right now. Think about that. 745 cards sold in 10 days on eBay, and that is just his base raw, not to mention any of his other variations. But let's talk about some of those other variations. So let's look at his silver during the same time period. Um, his silver started uh, started 10 days ago was around $504. And as of yesterday is all the way up at $695, a 37.9% increase over the course of the last 10 days. So his silver has gone up a little bit more than his base. It's gone up by a couple percent more than his base. And let's compare that to his, and by the way, transaction volume on his silver, 119 of those have sold over the course of the last 10 days. Let's compare that to his red, white, and blue variation. Uh, his red, white, and blue variation started at $106 10 days ago. Uh, yesterday was $144, a change of 35% and a transaction volume of 148. So what we, what we are seeing is that the Zion base, the Zion silver, and the Zion red, white, and blue all moved about the same percentage, which you would, you would expect. You would expect that Zion's cards would all move around the same percentage. But, and this is where my tool gets really powerful. I'm going to show you some interesting things. Let's take a look at Zion's green. Zion's green card during this same time period has increased by 99%. In the last 10 days, Zion's green card started at around $111. And as of yesterday, the average sale was $222, a 99%, almost 100% increase with a transaction volume of 91 of those sold. So still a very, very significant transaction volume. Now, why would his green card go up 100% whereas his base silver and red, white, and blue only went up somewhere in the neighborhood of about 35%? Can I tell you a secret? I'm almost afraid to tell you this secret because for some reason, the hobby has not caught on to this yet. Or maybe these people who have been buying Zion this last week know this, but I, most of the hobby doesn't know this. Here's the secret. Green is more rare than silver. 
green is more rare than silver. Prism green is a more rare variation than prism silver. Significantly so. Green is significantly more rare than silver. If you look at the population reports last year on Luka Doncic, there are, there are uh, 1,465 Luka Doncic prism silver PSA 10s. There are 366 Luka Doncic prism green PSA 10s. Okay, now some of you may say, well, maybe not as many people have sent in the greens for grading because you know they're not as valuable of a card as silver. Maybe a few people, but those green cards are still pretty valuable these days. And that does not, the, the fact that maybe some people didn't send in the greens for grading, that doesn't account for the fact that there are five times more silver cards than green cards, you know that that's not going to make up that difference uh, in terms of in terms of those cards in PSA popula PSA's population report last year. Um, green is more rare, and I think that as Zion's card prices have gone crazy over over this course of this last ten days, savvy investors out there are recognizing that the greens are really at a tremendous value compared to the price of the silvers and even compared to the price of his base card. So let's compare his base part, base card to his green card. Let's look at them side by side. And what you can see here is how that, you know, the green card started 10 days ago. The green card was only uh, about less, about double what the, uh, a little less than double what the base card was. But you can see this top line, the, the purple line has been the green card escalating over the past 10 days. Whereas the base card has also been escalating, but not to the same degree. And if we throw the silver card on this graph, you can see now the silver is the top line, the green is the middle line, and the base is the bottom line. You can see all three of those in comparison to each other and their escalation. But again, from a percentage standpoint, that green card, which you now again see on the graph here, that is the card that has gone up uh, a tremendous amount in value over the past week. But it's not just the green. There's also this group of probably savvy investors and savvy collectors that knows the green is a pretty rare parallel, also knows that there is another parallel that is as rare as the green and more rare than the silver, but is also priced significantly less than the silver. And that would be pink ice. And in fact, if we look at the trend of pink ice, pink ice has increased over the course of the last 10 days pink ice has increased just over 100% in the last 10 days. It started 10 days ago at $110. It ended at $221. What is, what is really, uh, you know, really on point is if you compare the pink ice and the green next to each other, look at that correlation. It's amazing. It is amazing with 196 total sold between the green and the pink ice, about 100 per card sold in the last 10 days. The movement of the pink to the green ice, and in this graph, the green, or not the green ice, rather the pink ice to the green. The green in this graph is the purple line and the pink ice is the, the light blue line in this graph. And you can see their movements. They both 10 days ago were almost the exact same price, right at $111. And as of yesterday, they were literally the exact same price. They were both selling right at $222. So they have doubled in the course of the last 10 days. Amazing to see that. Also amazing is the fact that there is an even more rare variation than the green or the pink ice, which for whatever reason, prices remain flat on over the course of the last 10 days. Now, granted, there are not very many of these sold because it's by far the most rare. It is by far the most rare. Yet the hobby hasn't picked up on this fact yet. And I'm talking about the hyper. The hyper, there were only nine hypers sold in the last 10 days because there's so few less of them. There's so many less of them. There's, there's so few of them, I should say. So few hypers compared to all of the other cards. Hypers are actually an extremely rare parallel. Um, 
only nine of them have sold, but their their prices have been flat over the last 10 days. Uh, 10 days ago, or actually seven days ago, um, because there weren't any sold um, on the 15th or the 16th or the 17th, but seven days ago, they were selling for $252, and then one sold the day before yesterday for $265. A again, only a few sales of these, so there's not a lot of statistical data, but it has been relatively flat. The hypers have been, um, and honestly, those should be worth a heck of a lot more uh, just given the rarity of those cards than what those are trading at. So what we have seen with Zion is over the last 10 days since his debut and leading up to his debut and since his debut, we've seen his base and his silver and his red, white, and blue all go up in around the 30 something percent range. We have then seen his green and his um, uh, pink ice double in price. And we've seen his hyper stay relatively flat. Now, let's take a look at what Zion's graded cards have done. And there have not been a lot of graded cards yet on the market from Zion, so they are certainly commanding a premium price. Um, you know, cards right now that people pulled out of prison boxes at the end of November and in early December and sent off to the grading companies, they're just starting to come back. They're just starting to come back. So you will see more and more graded cards on the market as every day goes by right now we only see you know a smaller group of what will eventually you know come onto the market but let's look at his bgs 95 and psa 10 of his regular prism silver these have been the sales of those over the course of the last uh over the course of the last 10 days so his his psa 10 so as of a couple of days ago his PSA 10 silver was averaging $2,145 and his BGS 9.5 silver was averaging $1,295. Okay, I got a couple of thoughts on this. First of all, the spread between PSA 10 and BGS 9.5, at least according to these numbers with Zion, is bigger than ever. Now, granted, there are less PSA 10s on the market today than BGS 9.5. Over the course of the last 10 days, there have been uh, only seven PSA 10s sold, whereas there have been 54 BGS 9.5 sold. So BGS 9.5s are certainly more common right now. More of them have come back from grading. That will change over time. PSA is just slower. They are slower and more expensive to get you your cards back. So you can get cards back from BGS quicker for a lower price point. And that's why there are more BGS graded cards in the market right now. Um, so I recognize that the silver P PSA 10s are more rare, but wow, what a spread. I mean, the PSA 10s commanding almost $1,000 more almost double they are almost double not quite double but they are almost double what the bgs 9.5s are at this point in time which is which is uh you know kind of amazing to see how that spread between psa and bgs seems to continue to be growing uh in the hobby it's interesting to see that but with all of these statistics at my disposal i now want to tell you you know, it's great that Zion has had this price run up and all of this hype. And I know Zion, look, Zion is great for the hobby. I love Zion because I love the attention he's bringing to the hobby. I love the attention he's bringing to the NBA. He's fun to watch. It's amazing having this guy in the hobby and, and seeing, you know, what card prices are doing. It is, it is a lot of fun. People are really passionate about this guy. But here is what gives me pause. And here is what tells me that honestly, people have lost their mind a little bit over the course of this past 10 days. People have lost their mind. And if you are buying up Zion cards right now, I think you lost your mind. <laughs> and let me show, let me tell you why. And this is just this is just a simple comparison of his PSA 10s, which granted there are not a lot on the market right now, but let's compare Zion's PSA 10s to Luca's Prism Silver PSA 10s. Remember Luca? Remember that guy? You remember Luca? Like, you know, the, the all world player who was everything Zion was and a lot more last year and continues to be this year. You remember that guy? Because most of you have forgotten about that guy because now you're all fixated on Zion. Let's do, and this is one of, by the way, this is one of the really cool things about my tool that I can compare players between different years, between different, different you know, uh, areas. And so what we are now looking at is we are looking at um, a comparison of PSA 10. Zion Prism Silver PSA 10 is the top line. 
Luca Prism Silver PSA 10 is the bottom line. And if we look at the most recent sales, what we see is that Zion's PSA 10 is commanding $2,145. Luca's PSA 10 is comparing is is $1,475. So Zion's silver PSA 10 is $700 more than Luca's silver PSA 10. And by the way, Zion's card is going to end up with more in population than Luca's card. Luca's silvers are going to eventually be more rare than Zion Silvers, because there is no question that Panini is printing more Prism this year to keep up with demand than they did last year. So we will eventually, a couple years from now, see the population report showing more Zion cards graded than Luca cards. Now, some people may suggest that it may be harder to get a PSA 10 grade with this year's PRISM than with last year's PRISM because there have been more printing issues with this year's PRISM. And, and that could be true. But there is a much greater population overall of this year's PRISM than last year's PRISM. At least that's what I believe. And so I think in the long run, you're still going to see similar numbers of PSA 10s, if not greater numbers of PSA 10s for Zion even if they're a harder PSA 10 to get, there's more cards out there. So there's more opportunities for those PSA 10s to fall. So the fact that Zion's cards are, are trading for $700 more than Lucas cards today are giving me real pause in terms of Zion's price points. And by the way, it's not just his PSA 10s. If you look at Zion's base cards raw, what they're going for, if you look at Zion's silver cards raw, what they're going for, they are also both going for more than Luca's raw base and raw silver cards are at this point in time. So this is an across the board trend right now that Zuka's, that that Zion's prices, I was about to say Zuka. Well, wouldn't that be one heck of a player? Can we take Zion and Luca and make Zuka? I, I, I would buy some Zuka cards, but no, Zion's cards being $700 more than Luca's cards, ugh. Now let's throw in another player. Let's throw in a favorite player of mine being here in Atlanta. So I just added Trey Young to the graph. Trey Young is the bottom line. So let's look at Trey, which is the bottom line here, compared to Luca, compared to Zion for their PSA 10 Prism Silver. So right now you can pick up a Trey PSA 10 Prism Silver for about $415 compared to the $1,475 for Luca or the $2,145 for Zion. Goodness. Goodness, like is Zion really looking like a good value there? Like I know he is all world, but is he really looking like a good value there? Do you need more proof as to why I'm a little bit concerned about Zion prices right now? Let me pull in Giannis. Let's take a look at Giannis. And for Giannis, I am going to pull in his 2013 base prism PSA 10, not his silver, but his base. And the reason why is because in 2013, there were hardly any silvers printed at all. It was an extremely low production run. In fact, there are only 63 silver PSA 10s in existence. So that is not a fair comparison, comparing that to uh, what Zion's population counts will be or what Lucas are or what Trey's are. A much better comparison is the base prism from 2013 Giannis, there are 1,900 of those PSA 10. Compared to Luca last year, there are 1,465 Luca Silvers PSA 10. And I would argue that when it's all said and done, there will actually be more Lucas than Giannis's. And the reason why is because there are still Lucas being graded and there is still a lot of unopened wax from 2018 Prism that will eventually get opened and those Lucas will eventually get graded. So I think eventually there will be more Lucas graded than the base Giannis from 2013. So I think it's a very fair comparison to compare the 2013 Giannis base to the 2018 Lucas Silver and the 2018 Trey Silver and the 2019 Zion Silver. So let's do that comparison to see how those stack up together. So here we are. The bottom line on this graph is Trey Young, his 2018 Prism Silvers. The next line up is Giannis. 
Giannis's 2013 base PSA 10s. The line above that is Luca, and that line at the very top is Zion. So when we add Giannis in here, Giannis's uh, base PSA 10s most recent sale $820 compared to about $415 for Trey, $1,475 for Luca, and $2,145 for Zion. So when you are telling me that you are Right now, and by you, I mean the general public out there is buying Zion cards for almost three times as much as a Giannis card that will end up having likely around the same population or the Giannis card will probably end up being a little bit more rare. Are you telling me that Zion is 3x Giannis right now? Is that what you're telling me? Because I think you've lost your damn mind. I mean, and, and I think that right now the, the hobby as a whole is caught up in this incredible Zion hype. And look, Zion is great. This is nothing against Zion. I hope, I hope that Zion becomes this transcendent player. I hope that he becomes an all-time great. I hope that he is a, a person that we tell our kids and our grandkids about 50 years from now, about how we were sitting on the couch watching Zion's debut back in the year 2020. I hope that is the case. And if that happens, then sure, over the course of time, some of these card prices that I'm telling you about today could look cheap. Zion's card prices today could look cheap 10 or 20 years from now uh, if he is that transcendent player that we all hope that he can be. But... When you look in the present and you look at where things are today and you look at the fact that Zion's card prices are almost three times more than an equivalent Giannis card or a card that will become equivalent in the next few years, that gives me reason for concern. And I have to think that there is going to be a price correction on Zion coming sometime in the near future. When exactly that will happen, I don't know. It could happen in the next few weeks. But if he has really great play the next few weeks, then it probably won't happen in the next few weeks. It could happen in the off season. It could happen sometime next season. I'm not exactly sure. I would guess it's going to happen sooner rather than later because I think there's going to become a point in time when people in the hobby start to realize that while Zion is this super exciting, super hyped player right now, they begin to realize, wait a minute, why are we paying more for this guy than what we're paying for Luca? And why are we paying more for this guy than what we're paying for Giannis? And, and why are we paying several times more for this guy than what we're paying for players the like of Trey? And I think that that will start to correct itself. I think that there will be a correction, maybe a crash or maybe just a correction. I'm not sure which, but I think there will be a correction. And I think Zion's cards are going to come back down to earth sometime in the not so distant future. So my recommendation to all of you out there, I would be very careful about buying Zion cards today. If there is a crash or if there is a correction, then perhaps that is your opportunity to get in on Zion. But I do not think we are at the bottom of the market right now. I think that there will be a dip at some point in time, probably not in the so distant future based on these numbers that I'm seeing. All right, look, I hope you guys enjoyed uh, my analysis here and I hope you guys enjoyed that tool that I just showed you. Would love to know what you think about it. Let me know in the YouTube comments what you think of that tool you just saw. And it can do a lot more than what I just showed you. When I release this within the next two weeks as part of my membership program, uh, I will do a video showing you some of the other features of the tool as well. It can do some amazing things that I'm excited to share with you that I think will really make all of us smarter and more savvy investors going forward. If you would like to know when my tool is released, all you need to do is go to my website, sportscardinvestor.com, scroll right below the featured story, and there's a box there that says, get free sports card investing tips by email. Just put your email in there, and I will send out an email when the tool is live so that you can go check it out. While you're on my website, by the way, there are a few really great new articles that have been posted in the last week. There is one um, by Sean Ortega on, are you a collector or are you an investor? 
starting an interesting dialogue and discussion about that. There's one from Joel Agu, who has posted a number of great articles to the website um, about investing in the hobby. Really cool story about some amazing pulls that him and his father uh, have pulled. Really neat story. And then also Hockey Cards 101 by Rob Demore. So check those articles out on sportscardinvestor.com. And if you're in the Atlanta area, I hope to see you at the Loganville Card Show next Saturday, 8 a.m. to noon at Grace Point Nazarene Church. That's all I got for you today. Thanks, everybody. And I am looking forward to seeing you back next weekend with my next episode. Until then, enjoy your week. Take care.